Hi guys, we are now on the fourth chapter which is about data management. In this topic, we are going to discuss what statistics is all about. Statistics. It is a branch of mathematics dealing with the collection, organization, presentation, analysis, and interpretation of data. Statistics can help you guess whether or not you're going to be accepted in a certain university. We also use statistics when you look at the weather forecast or to decide what to wear. Statistics is all about making sense of data and figuring out how to put that information to use. Statistics is also a systematic collection of data on measurements or observations. It is often related to demographic information such as population counts at different ages, incomes, and population counts. In statistics, there are different methods used in gathering or collecting data. And these are the direct or interview method, the indirect or questionnaire method, the registration method, observation method, and experimental method. So for the first one, we have the direct or interview method. It is a person-to-person -person encounter between the source of information or the interviewee and the one who gathers information or the interviewer. And this is done by personal, personal interview or telephonic interview. Next method is the indirect or questionnaire method. It is a technique with, in which questionnaire is used to elicit the information or data needed. The questionnaire is consists of questions printed or typewritten in the definite order on a form or a set of forms. So, dito sa indirect method, we make use of questionnaire to elicit data. Next is the registration method. We obtain data from the records of the government agency authorized by law to keep such data or information and make this available to the researcher. So, for example, the birth and death rates by the NSO or National Statistics Office. We also have the number of uh, registrations registered cars by the LTO or land, or land Transportation Office and also the list of registered voters by the COMELEC or Commissions on Elections. Fourth one is the observation method. This is a technique in which data, particularly those pertaining to the behaviors of individuals or group of individuals during the given situation. Okay, example, allowing children to play with selected toys to determine which is most popular, children's behavior, customer's movement, number of customers visiting to the store, and customer's responses in a retail store. So, in observation method, we gather data by merely observing. And lastly, we have the experimental method, a system used to gather data from the results of performed series of experiments on some controlled and experimental variables. This is commonly used in scientific inquiries and is based on observations. Example, drinking alcohol negatively affects memory and if students sleep less before the exam, then their grades on the exam will be lower. So, these examples are done by experimenting and observing. Let's now proceed with the classification of variables. Particularly, we have two. So, the first one is the qualitative or categorical variable. It is a variable that yields categorical responses. Examples, names, color, marital status, and etc. 
Remember that qualitative variable is the classification of individuals based on some attributes or characteristics. So, qualitative variable um, classification. The next type of variable is the quantitative variable. A variable that takes on numerical values representing the amount or quantity. Examples, we have the height, weight, number of siblings, and many more. So take note that quantitative variable are numerical measures which again represents measurable quantity. So dito naman sa quantitative, meron na tayong numbers na involved. Next one. So, we also have two types of quantitative variable. So, the first type is the discrete quantitative variable. It is a variable which can assume finite. It is usually measured by counting or enumeration. Examples, number of students in a class, number of eggs in a basket, and family members. In other words, discrete variable has countable number of possible values. So, kagaya ng number of students in a class, kaya natin silang bilangin as well as the number of eggs in a basket and the family member. So, remember, discrete, it's countable. While the second type of quantitative variable is the continuous. It is a variable in which can assume infinitely many corresponding to a line interval. Examples, height or weight, wind speed, and the time required to run a mile. So, the difference between continuous and discrete, yung discrete ay countable while itong continuous, it's uncountable or we tend to measure it. So, dito sa continuous, sinusukat. Natin. So, kagaya ng height and weight, so it's measured by kilograms and um, in centimeters or meters. Yung wind speed, hindi naman natin siya ginag, um, binibilang, di ba? So, it is measured. So, always remember, kapag discrete, um, countable, and continuous, it's measurable. Okay, let's now proceed with the levels of measurements and particularly we have four levels of measurements which are the nominal scale ordinal scale interval scale and ratio scale the first one is the nominal scale nominal scale assigns names or labels to observation in purely arbitrary sequence the labels are used to classify the respondents or objects without ordering. So, dito sa nominal scale, we have nominal data. Um, nominal scale usually deals only with non-numeric variables. So, remember that this scale is used for classifications. We have here some examples of this level of measurement. So, nominal First, we have gender, brand of cell phones, religion, civil status, phone number, and main source of allowance. So, um, like yung qualitative variable, so um, kagaya ng nominal scale natin yun. So, classifications. Next level of measurement is the ordinal scale. We assign numbers or labels to observe to observations with implied ordering, ranking the respondents' preferences and ordinal data. So, in this level of measurement, it's just like nominal scale, but the only difference is in here, there is an order. So, from the word itself, ordinal, merong order na sinusunod. Okay, for some examples, we have Stage of cancer, we have stages 1, 2, 3, and 4. So, naka-order siya. Size of t-shirt, we have small, medium, and large. Educational level, elementary, secondary, and tertiary. And, we have the satisfaction level, very dissatisfied, dissatisfied, neutral, satisfied, and very satisfied. So, these are just some example of ordinal scale. So, always remember, ordinal, meron tayong order. Next level of measurement is the interval scale. 
we reflect distance between rank position of the respondents or objects in equal units. This is defined as the scale, which gives the distance between any two numbers of known sizes. It has no true absolute zero point and can be manipulated algebraically by addition or subtraction, but not division or multiplication. So, ang I, pinakatatandaan yung meaning ng interval scale ay it has no true absolute zero point. So, meaning to say, yung zero dito ay merong value. Yes. Um, let's have here examples. So, temperature is an example of uh, interval level of measurement. So, kagaya ng sabi ko, it has no true zero point. So, ang zero dito ay may value. So, halimbawa, sabihin natin, zero degrees Celsius. So, yung zero degrees Celsius, meron siyang value, which is yung freezing point. So, malamig yun. So, and um, second example, we have SAT scores or generally scores. So, kapag sinabi na zero yung score mo, may score ka. Yun nga lang, zero. So, interval, zero has a value. Next and last level of measurement is the ratio scale, wherein it reflects the existence of true absolute zero point as its origin. So, ito yung opposite ng interval scale. So, kung sa interval, no true absolute zero point, dito sa ratio, we have true absolute zero point. It doesn't have negative number unlike interval. Ratio of two scale point is independent of the unit of measurement and it has all the properties of an interval data and can be manipulated algebraically by multiplication and division. So, let's have here examples of ratio scale. Okay, distance. So, kagaya ng sinabi ko, this is the opposite ng interval scale. So, kapag sinabi natin na 0 kilometers yung distance, so, meron bang distance yun? So, wala. So, um, kaya ang definition ng ratio ay, it has a true absolute zero point. Kasi ang zero niya ay wala ng value. As well as weight and height. So, kapag sinabi natin ang weight mo ay 0 kilograms, so wala kang weight. Kapag sinabi natin na ang height mo ay 0 centimeters, so wala kang height. So, ratio, um, 0 has no value. Kapag 0, 0 na talaga siya. Okay, so I have here some examples. And uh, we're going to identify these 5 examples. Kung anong type siya ng variable and kung anong level of measurement. So, if it's qualitative, we're going to write qualitative. And if it's quantitative, we have to figure out if it's continuous or discrete. And then, identify natin yung level of measurement. But before I forgot, let me remind you, dun sa four levels of measurement, nominal and ordinal are under qualitative variable and yung interval and ratio are under quantitative variable.